Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another Minecraft video. In this one we're going to take a look at how to build Total Wipeout in Minecraft. Now if you haven't heard of Total Wipeout before, this should probably help you. Now I think we can all agree that that looks like quite a lot of fun. I mean I personally would quite like to try and conquer the Assault Course. Unfortunately though, Total Wipeout no longer exists, it's completely stopped running, they're not filming it anymore, which means that unfortunately, none of us will ever get the opportunity to play on that assault course. So I thought to myself, well you know what, I'll do the next best thing, I will construct this in Minecraft so all of us can have fun on it. So as you can see right here, I've created a very large watered area, this is a 25 block wide by 51 block long watered area, I mean as you can see this is a huge space and we're going to be chucking a bunch of obstacles inside here that should be a bit of a challenge for pretty much every single Minecraft player. So the way that I'm going to start this thing is I'm going to create the entrance to the course. Now in typical Total Wipeout fashion we're going to be creating a slide but unfortunately in Minecraft we can't really do the whole slide thing so instead we're going to build a slope of blocks which seems to be the next best thing. So I'm going to go three blocks in from this side and two blocks in from this side right here in the back right hand corner and I'm going to place in eight blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to do two red blocks out the end like that. And I'm going to fill in all of those. Then I'm going to chuck in just a couple red blocks going up like this. So we have a small slope going upwards there. And then we're going to place red blocks going around like that. And then I'm going to create the outline to our area because generally speaking, the color scheme for Total Wipeout is blue and red. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five blocks like that and then we're going to run that background like this and just make our way back down to the bottom just like that and then once again do our three blocks out the end on both sides and run this red line going around the front like this just a bit like that then unfortunately we have got to fill in all of this space with our blue blocks so all of these are going to be blue blocks all of the sides are going to be blue blocks and all of the back as well unfortunately you've got quite a bit of block placing to do but i'm going to crack on with this one and i'll catch you guys in a little bit so we go this is what we got so far as you can see i've added in a tiny bit extra detail across the top there with the fence post I think it's a nice bit of detail, but if you don't want to add it, of course you don't have to add it. But anyway, we're now going to crack on with our first obstacle, and that is going to be the balancing beam. So you want to go two blocks out from this block right here, and we're going to place five blocks going across. So it's a relatively short balancing beam. And then we're going to chuck in some stained glass going across the top in this blue color, just to fit the color scheme. Now, obviously we've just built the balancing beam, okay? This is what it is. It's very nice and simple which isn't what we want okay we don't want it to be too easy so what we're going to do is we're going to chuck in some redstone right here to make the job just a tiny bit harder now i'm going to chuck in a few blocks like this we're going to throw in some string going across like that that's what's going to detect our player running across then we're going to place a redstone torch which is going to invert that signal and we're going to take the output from that and run it right the way across there and place some redstone dust on top of all of those then on the sides of all of these blocks we're going to chuck in some redstone torches and we're going to place some dispensers running across like this and all of these dispensers are filled to the brim with snowballs. You guys can see where I'm going with this one. So as soon as the player runs through that tripwire, the snowballs are going to start firing and it's going to make it just a tiny bit more difficult to run across because as you can see, well, they would take out the player if we weren't in creative mode. The next thing that I've done is created a 5x7 platform, which is like the landing platform from our balancing beam. And this will allow us to move on to the next obstacle. And one quick thing that I just have to do is place in some ladders over here for the players that fall off the balancing beam. And also I'm going to chuck in a ladder over here for the players that fall off on the punching wall. Now the punching wall is definitely a famous obstacle in Total Wipeout because it's absolutely hilarious. And what we're going to do is construct it just off in this area right here. So we're going to place eight blocks going across like this. That's three blocks, four blocks, five blocks, six, seven, eight, just going across there. And then we're going to create a slight little structure just making its way up like this. And across the bottom, we're going to place a line of blocks just like that. Now that's because this is where all of our sticky pistons are going to be going. That's going to make places them quite a lot easier. So we need to go up like that, just up like this. And then the last one is up like that. And on all of their faces, we're going to be placing in our red blocks. And then you want to fill in all of the gaps with your blue blocks. Now it is time to do the redstone for this thing. So the first thing we've got to do is just place a couple blocks out like that. And then a couple blocks on the top and basically connect up all of these pistons in exactly the same way. So if it's on the bottom layer, then you place two blocks at the bottom, redstone running directly into it, top layer, two blocks like this, 
redstone right there. Then you want to place a block above all of this redstone right here, then place a line of blocks going right the way across with comparators running into all of those. Then you want to place some droppers facing upwards just like that with some hoppers running back down into them. And then we're going to place a line of blocks that is going to be powering all of these droppers with a line of redstone running across like this. Next up on the to-do list, we just need to run a redstone input into this line. So you just want to place a couple blocks going across like this, a comparator and then a repeater. And you need two blocks right here and two hoppers running into one another with an item on the inside and that will trigger our redstone clock. So as you can hear from all of the droppers clicking, really frustrating noise, this thing is now functional. So all we have to do is we need to chuck items inside of all of our droppers. Now, the way that we have to do that is we place one non-stackable item and one stackable item. So there is our stackable item, and this right here is going to be our non-stackable item. And you need to do exactly the same thing for each and every one of these droppers. So what exactly does this do? Well, first off, it creates a really, really frustrating noise, as you can tell right here, but it creates a randomized punching wall as well. Now, this is an incredibly difficult obstacle. Uh, I'm just gonna warn you right here, but I'm going to try my best to do it on camera, and no, it hasn't worked. Right, let's try again. That was better. We managed to get about halfway. Right, let's see if we can do this. I thought we had it then, but as you can see, this is incredibly difficult, and it is totally luck of the draw whether you manage to make it. Sometimes all of the pistons extend, sometimes none of the pistons extend. That sort of is the nature of your randomizer. But anyway, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create another platform off on the edge here. Now this is going to be a 3x3 three three area of blue, just like that. And then we're going to chuck in all of the red blocks as well, just going around like this. And this is going to take us up into the big bouncing balls, which is a very famous thing in Total Wipeout. It's just one of those iconic obstacles. The first thing that we've got to do is we've actually got to create the platform for this thing. So I'm going to go five blocks up from this platform right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to place two blocks going across and create our platform up at the top here. Once again, just stick in with that blue and red theme right there. And then we're going to have ladders going up like this. And down at the bottom, we're going to have some fences that sort of look like structural bits. I mean, once again, you can do whatever you really fancy with this one. As you guys know, building isn't really my strong point, but I definitely think these look pretty cool. And we're going to have some fences going across here as well to stop players from flying off the edges because we definitely wouldn't want that sort of thing. So your big red balls are going to be going off in this area here, but it's going to have a slight twist. As opposed to being in this direction, running off over here, we're actually going to have it going off in this direction to A, make more use of this space, but B, add a bit of a challenge to the first big red ball because you've actually got to jump off onto the ball, then turn and then bounce off onto the next one. It's going to be pretty difficult. So now we've actually got to build the big red ball. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to go four blocks from the end of the platform. So that's two, three, four. We're going to chuck in our block right there, then our two fence posts. Then we're going to create a sort of cross shape down the bottom right here and basically repeat that process on every single side. So I'm going to create that area there, then place in the blocks just like this. As you can see, we've got more crosses and then up at the top, we also have a cross. And there we go. We've got ourselves a ball. Now, I know what you're thinking, okay, this is Minecraft. Very, very difficult to create anything that even remotely looks like a ball but I would say I've done a pretty good job. So now it's time to chuck in some of the redstone. We're going to place in a pressure plate. Then we're going to take out that block right there, place in some redstone. Repeater set to four ticks. Then we're going to have a sticky piston facing upwards with a slime block on its face. And when we stand on this pressure plate, then run across, we should generally get launched upwards. Now it does take a little bit of practice and by the look of things, I need much more of it, but I can promise you it's fully functional. Next up, you want to build the same thing two more times. So you want to go five blocks away from this block right here. So that is three, four, five, and place in another block and then just repeat the whole process. So once again, we're going to create our crosses down at the bottom, then our three by three area, just making its way around like that. Then another cross up at the top right here, our pressure plates taking out this block, the redstone, and then the repeater, and then the block facing upwards with a sticky piston and then your slime block. Now build it again. So now it is actually time to start work on the platform that we're going to be landing on after doing the big red ball. So what we have to do is we have to go four blocks away from this block right here. We're going to place a block there and we're going to carry that out by 13 blocks. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. As you can see, we've got two blocks to go from the edge of our water area, which is strange considering this place seemed massive when we started, but now it seems really quite small now that we filled it in with all the contraptions. Anyway, the next thing that we need to do is we need to go six blocks up from this point. So you just want to place a block right here 
And then we want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then place a block up to the top right there. And then we're going to chuck in all of the ladders, which will take us up onto the surface if you manage to mess up doing the big red balls. To actually construct the platform, you just want to go three blocks across like this, then place a block down there, and then another line of blocks making its way right the way across to the edge of where our blue finish is. And then once again, you guys know the drill by now, we need to chuck in all of our red wall, just making its way up like this, and basically surrounding all of our blue wall box a bit like that. And then down at the bottom here, we're actually going to chuck in all of our fence posts. Now these fence posts are going to make their way right the way up into the blocks and we're just going to go right the way across here and all the way up to the top here. You've got a lot of fence posts to place here, but then it should look like a pretty decent support structure. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is planning out the final obstacles because, well, let's just say that these are fairly ambitious obstacles, okay? They're quite redstone heavy and I wanna make sure that I place them in the correct spot. So we need to go three blocks from the edge of this right hand corner right here and then we're going to chuck in that block right there two blue blocks and then another block there and then we need to carry that out by four blocks just like this and then we're going to surround all of those blocks with our red blocks right there then you want to go two blocks from there and place in your line of two blocks like this and create a two by two area of fences then we're going to go three four five six blocks here then place another two blocks with another two by two area of fences so this is where the first obstacle is going to be going this is where the next one is going to be going and then this is actually going to be the finish to your total wipeout course. So for the final obstacle, we're going to create swings. Now, these aren't the sorts of swings that you normally expect. These are basically swinging platforms. They have them in total wipeout, but obviously very difficult to create swinging things in Minecraft when Minecraft doesn't really do swinging. So what we're going to do is we're going to sort of improvise and create something that looks a little bit like a swing using slime blocks. So the way that we're going to do that is by placing two blocks in like this, some redstone dust right there. Then we're going to have two blocks of obsidian on either side with some blocks popping out like this. A repeater set to two ticks. That's going to be running out into this block right here with redstone dust on top and then a block right there. And we're going to do the, exactly the same thing on the other side. So two ticks right there, a block up like this, your redstone, and then your block just in like that. Then all we have to do is chuck in a few sticky pistons facing in this direction right here. So we're going to have sticky pistons here. We're also going to have sticky pistons on this side as well. Then we're going to have a bunch of slime blocks running across like this with some blue blocks in the center. That's going to be our platform. Then we're going to run a redstone clock into this redstone line right here. Now the way that we're going to do that is by placing a block, a comparator, and then our two blocks like this, and then your two hoppers running into one another. To power that redstone clock, all you have to do is throw in a non-stackable item and you should see that this sort of thing will start happening. Now, there is a chance that it will look a little bit broken. For example, if I break this comparator right here and run it into this block, you can see that we get something like this happening. That's not what you want to happen. You want the other thing to be happening, which is a little bit strange and I don't fully understand it. So you might need to play around with your comparator placements, but in theory, it should look a little bit like this. And that means that we have ourselves a moving platform that we now need to jump onto. I mean, that's going to be incredibly challenging. So what you have to do is recreate what you've done right here on this other fence post there. So we go, we now have ourselves two moving platforms that are incredibly difficult to get onto. Now I'm going to try my best to demonstrate me doing this and it is going to be very, very difficult indeed because as you guys know, not exactly a parkour genius, but it is totally possible. I could promise you it is possible. I'm just not skilled enough to do it on camera. So there we go, that is that obstacle done. We also have the big balls as well. We have got the punching wall that is fully functional and also our balancing beam that actually needs a slight change to the redstone, unfortunately. There was a slight mistake in that one. All we have to do is take out all of these blocks. We then need to place blocks going across the top here, chuck in all of the redstone right there, and then throw in all of the redstone torches and place blocks going across like this. So now that one is fully functional and the snowballs will fire out in full force as soon as you try and jump onto the balancing beam. There we have it, ladies and gents. We've completed a full total wipeout course. This thing is going to be very, very difficult to handle and I cannot wait to see this in all of your survival worlds. But unfortunately, ladies and gents, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo and I'm out. I'll see you later. Thank you.